team in this game instantly sets up all four of his base camera hotkeys, though, so maybe not going to be cheesy this time. As we do start in the upper right side with a red Terran player, these two are teammates on the Platinum Heroes. It is Acheron. And spawning here in the top left as our blue Zerg player, it is young Yakov. I like his name. Makes me think of uh, Command and Conquer. Yeah. Or Red Alert 2. Yeah, you get like... Um, what were some of those units called? Like Crazy Ivan and things like that. And then I think of... It, it, one of them, one of those crazy Ivans could have been like young Yakov, you know. Oh, I see. Crazy, <laughs> cra crazy terrorist guy. Huh. Also, it's actually a pretty good name to say, like young Yakov. You know, he rolls off the tongue yeah. and stuff. And, like, I just names. wonder what happens when he gets to like 30. Does he become like middle aged Yakov? Mid Yakov. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's kind of like Petite Drogo, you know? Like, what happens when he becomes a uh, big dragon? Yeah. It just never happened, man. It just never happened. He stayed petite. Stay petite. Not like uh, not like Wayne, who evolved from Vanya to Radata, then evolved to, to Wayne. <laughs> I, I gotta say, of all Pokemon to pick, Wardy, I know like people have talked about this, but freaking Ratata, like that is, it's as bad as calling yourself Pidgey. Like it, it's literally <laughs> the same area of Pokemon. <laughs> you know, like it, it really is. It's just. <laughs> I love I how I love how your analogy is like it's like calling yourself the other Pokemon that shows up where Radita shows up. <laughs> yeah, it's just terrible. Oh man! And then because I, I still think Vanya was a cool name. Wait, oh, I like this uh, this bunker over there. Does it block the third? Because this is something I, I I think there's a. I mean, it kind of should. I think unless it can go down. You, uh, it, it's one of those. It's one of those maps where you have to take this as your third. Yeah. yeah so you starting mentioned off earlier. like this, I think this is just cool. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier where you're like, man, I love some, you know, some of these builds where you kind of go and block that third base and you just don't let them take it. And then where do they take their third? Well, they don't, you know? You, you, yeah. do, you don't want to go bottom left and take the fourth base location as your third because then you're going to get dropped like crazy. So it really limits what you can do. Young Yakov now decides to put down a gas and... That's actually kind of uh, going to be a factor as well, right? There's going to be his second gas coming through, so... Oh, uh, no, sorry. He's got the gas built on the... Yeah, uh, never mind. I was wondering if he was going to take another gas to <laughs> kind of uh, make up for the lack of a third, so then this drone building the extractor trick. My bad. Never mind. Never mind. It, it's all good. It's been a long day in water, you know. Like, have we cast eight series today? No. Have we cast nine? No. Oh. Yes, we've cast ten. We've cast a lot of series today. Yeah. So it's, it's okay if you make errors, but I just hope it's okay that I make errors as well. It's not. And I yeah, expect the best you. Yuri. <laughs> you, now I'm thinking of those uh, alert names. So thank you, Tabertal. Like Yuri, Tanya, Yakov. Like it's totally one of those. <laughs> There's the uh, Jerome, by the way. Tried to become the hatchery just there. The Reaper is going to get away and just delays that a teeny tiny bit longer. So pretty hefty delay. Now the Queen's blocking the hatchery with that all in on it. That poor drone finally gets to be a hatch as the Reaper will go down. You know, I think young Yakov, all things said and done, has probably managed things. Up, like I, I don't know if this is his first rodeo, probably isn't, but he's kept his minerals decently low despite this happening. Because this is not one of those situations that you're like, yeah, I'm going to go into this game and, you know, I'm, I'm going to get blocked here. It's it's definitely something that throws you off massively. Akron is following this up with a double gas opening before the third. So looking to absolutely pile on the pressure. And we also talked about how the air distance is pretty close between these guys. Definitely gonna... Well, there's a lot of potential to deal a lot of damage with this Banshee, which young Yakov will get the scout on at least. Yep, gonna get a little bit of scout and information to be able to work with that. And obviously gets to see absolutely everything, so that's always great. That was a big plus. And do you have the uh, cloak coming through, the Banshee on the way. Double Hellions popping up. Failing Ness is coming through, and we do have Alain starting from Young Yakov, so yeah, he just gets everything ready. Again, he knows what he's playing against, so he can make good decisions. That is his current, uh, current motto. You know what I just thought about, Wardy? What? If you go ahead and call yourself Ratata, you might as well call yourself frickin' Magikarp. 
Like, you know, <laughs> I, I can't get this out of my head now. It's at just, least, at least Magikarp I, evolves into Gyarados. Rattata evolves into a slightly bigger rat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'll be super honest. In my first, like, six-man Pokemon squad or whatever it was that you could have, I did have Raticate. He had yeah. Dig for me. He was so cool. <laughs> well, you get, emotionally, you get emotionally attached to that first one you find, man. That's the thing. Yeah, well, I, I even, um, you know, I caught one of those frickin' Metapods, leveled it up so I only had Hardened, so I had to keep <laughs> switching it out. Oh. But Butterfree was pretty badass. Yeah, Butterfree was sick, but it was just impossible to get early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. De Tough definitely times. was. 1-1 one, one still so on the way. Drones. Yeah, I, I do I do like this bounce back and forth, you know, uh, mm -hmm. for us. But Acheron, I, I like what he's set himself up for here. Like, they're both playing... A pretty good, solid TVZ so far. Is this just... Wait, he does have a third up at the wall, right? Because yeah. he does, yeah. Okay, okay, good, good, yeah, good. Yeah. He's got a third base rock, and he cancelled the fourth base of his opponent, so that's obviously great. That's lovely, getting that active creep tumors. Goodbye. So, uh, yeah, you reset a few of those, and... Yeah, Akron is playing well. I love the activity that he's finding so far. He's going to get himself another creep tumor. He's going to chase the queens down Ooh. for a kill as well, because why the heck not? And Akron is popping off. No, he's getting so much done early. Uh, every time we said something good, we, we then look and it's like, oh, damn, he's got his tank stuck <laughs> yeah. in his face. <laughs> That's happened a lot today. Maybe more. Oh, and there's so many lings in this base yeah, as well, Wardy. What have you done to him? No, I cursed him. He, he, it's the third, mate. You, you mentioned the third was in the wall and he moved it over. A couple of Banes are going to show up. I think we're going to be able to get rid of those before they connect. So, yeah, this is actually not that bad. He didn't lose SCVs here at all. So this is probably good for Akron because he actually gets to clean up a bunch of the army for free. And, I mean, that's scary. He's about to have 1-1. One, one. If he gets a push going right now, young Yakov may struggle in numbers. He absolutely might. You're absolutely right because he's gearing up to get Hydra on the go. He's got, like, the plus 1-1 one, one finishing up as well. Young Yakov does have a squad of Lings out on the map that could absolutely deal damage on that newly uh, formed third. But can this Terran army be stopped? That is the question for Young Yakov right now. Yep, well, I mean, he is uh, going to have to figure it out. The tank's in a beautiful little spot there. Again, I love the counterattacks because I think, in theory, they're going to distract Akron and keep him busy, but Akron's dealing with them well. Doesn't lose SCVs again. Doesn't kind of take a bad fight over here while it's happening. Balin Speed's about to finish, but we actually load with the Medivacs anyways. He's just going to let the tank do a bit more work here. Now we unload. We get rid of the Balins with the tank target fire as well. And these Marines, as they unload, should deal with the rest of the Lings. So Akron continues to make this a pretty decent fight for himself. He does, he does. But the one thing that I'm looking at here that absolutely is going to keep Young Yakov in this game, 1-1 one, one is finishing. And the Armory only just finished. So that massive lead in upgrades that Akron has, it's fading. It's fading pretty damn rapidly. And his work count 53. Young Yakov's getting himself into a really good spot now. Yep, that's true. If he keeps on holding, it's uh, looking good for him. He's about to equal up upgrades as well. So that's not going to be a problem for the foreseeable future. And uh, again, he keeps on running by. I love it. Just more Lings heading around the bottom. Although a few of them accidentally go and path through the rest of the army there. So that's a shame. But uh, the general idea of what Young Yakov is doing is great. And he's going to be able to get even more Banes up. The Hydrogen is finished. Those upgrades begin as well. So we get that prepped and ready to go. There's a few Lings show up here and they're going to go after some SCVs. Oh, even more going. I mean, that's a lot of Terran to be fair. Like, you're going to have a hard time trading nicely against that. But at that third base... Oh, blimey, this damage is absolutely stacking up. Like, Terran don't want to be in this situation where you're getting run by, you know? You, you really don't, but I guess that is one of the things about this map. That third base is so damn open. Yup, yup, it is. It is uh, very... Oh, it, it's funny because it's open, but it's very hard to get up the ramp to it. Obviously, that doesn't matter so much for Zerg, but it's very difficult to, like, get your army up there if you're, like, a Terran or so pushing in, so kind of makes it uh, an interesting third for sure. Let's just see our Marines and Medivacs continue over to the left-hand side. Couple more Lings getting picked away. The Banes are still chasing through. Medivacs loading up once again. I just saw a Baneling blow up on that rock, but don't worry, Young Yakov. We didn't really see it. Um, and now the drop goes into that natural. And there's quite a bit of Zerg to greet it, but is there enough? I mean, one Baneling does get a pretty damn miraculous hit on most of it, but this is the kind of damage that Akron needs, and he needs more of it, but all the Queens do greet it. Young Yakov, this lad... He is all about just throwing his army across the map, isn't he? Be it like harass or rumbies, things like that. But 
He really wanted to send it there. Yep. Absolutely just going to be seeing the uh, the rocks, by the way, are <laughs> kind of a contest. We're going to try and clean those up so we can access that area. But Akron comes around the bottom left, and during this time, he knocks down a drone that wanted to be a hatchery. And again, now you have to split up a little bit as young Yakov and figure out what direction you want to take this in. Just going to see our Marines knocking down the creep tumors. 2-2 two -two is about a finish from Akron. And to be fair, young Yakov did not immediately start 2-2, two -two, so it's another little timing window for Akron. But I'm not sure if he has enough units anywhere to really make one solidified push. Um, I guess he's just very split up. But if he does make one solid push, maybe there's a timing before 2-2 two is done. One major thing to talk about this game, there's no fourth CC on the way for Aquaron. This is eight barracks, and the last three are all naked barracks as well. Like, so Aquaron is absolutely committed to this. Like, there's there's no follow-up to this. He needs this to do something, and it is a very big 2-2 two -two timing. But look at young Yakov again. He's in the natural here, Wardy. And I mean, he realizes how committed this is, I do believe. But again, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to stop it, because... That is a lot of Terran at his front door. Yup, a lot of Marines. Tanks are going to get sieging. The Banes are going to come through. The Ling's still attacking on the other side. A few more SCVs going down. Tanks in a great spot. And we are just going to be seeing the rest of these Marines figuring out what they want to do. Got a whole bunch of Queens. This is beautiful for Akron. The position is great. And again, it was hitting just before 2-2. Now finally 2-2 finish. Lurk is on the way. Are we ever going to really get a chance to see those do much? Remember, these lurkers are not upgraded because the hive isn't even finished yet. We pull back and we let the tanks and the marines do the work, and that is beautiful for Akron as he is going to keep pushing in. It looks as though he's got this game number one on lockdown. The supplies are so close. I mean, look at all that Zerg in the bottom left, though, here. That's going to be kind of tricky. Taking out third hatchery is a big deal. But all those units that was kind of left behind just to deal with all the run buys, they are now marching their way across the map. But we got to remember, it's not as if Aquan's rich behind this. 42 SCVs. He has to make something happen with everything he has. And granted, he's doing just that. But it, the finish line, it, it, it's right there. He's, he's on, on the nook of it, you know? Yeah, he is, just needs to figure out these lurkers. They don't have that lurker range yet, so they're not as scary as they will eventually be. Oh, he's got Liberators too. He's got ways to push into this, man. As the lurkers going to try and dive on the tanks, Ooh. which are all on Siege, so... Libs need to just siege up. The tanks actually don't re-siege, which I think is the right choice there, because otherwise they would have just got killed. Uh, so good choice by Akron. Again, he's just trying to push himself over the finishing line. Like you say, he's not have economy on the third base any longer. He needs to get it done with this push. Yeah, you know, Yakov hold him off long enough. Again, the lurkers are terrifying, but, I mean, this run by is pretty terrifying too right now. Yeah, I mean, 3-3 isn't on the way. Look at Akron's gas. Like, this, I think he was kind of forced into this kind of situation. The SCV count, 25 remaining. Every second that goes by is just worse for Acheron. So even though he had young Yakov absolutely on the ropes, young Yakov has brawled his way back into this. You look at the workers killed this game, 46 SCVs died, 11 drones. You're normally talking the other way around, but <laughs> young Yakov has played such a counter-aggressive game. Yep, 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 yep. I mean, look at it, it's... Uh... It's always been about the counterattacks. It's always been about the follow-ups. Never about kind of oh. fighting straight up. As we're going to get in again. Man, Akron is letting up the pressure, which I guess is fine because he's getting more liberators out. But he's going to have to go again soon because these run buys continue to be scary. And it's, he's already on kind of low economy, man. Also, he's against Lurk Tech. And this Lurk Tech is it's not known for being bad, you know? <laughs> it's uh, pretty damn solid. And Vipers also going to be joining the mix here. So those Liberators can be yoinked in. This is a good drop. I mean, unfortunately for him, this is the one time that Young Yakov's actually at home to greet it. But still, Young Yakov has to know that he's in good shape here. Like, as long as he isn't too crazy. Because it's 24 SCVs. 24, Wardy. That is such a horrible situation to be in. Yep, his economy is pretty much non-existent. It's got to be with the army that he's got right now. But again, getting that across the map currently seems like a difficulty. I do wonder what he's going to say is kind of the, the final line before he just sends it and goes. I mean, he, he's pretty much protecting one mineral line worth of mining at this point. Like, he, he really is. I haven't seen SCVs produced from him for quite some time here. And... Maybe he's like, you know what? Every SCV I make dies at this point. Like, why would I make any more? Like, you're right. He's going to send it, but there's now 12 lurkers. How many scans does he even have available? Like, it's a lot of liberators, to be fair to him. And his army supply is very, very big. 
Yep, Hami Supply is uh, his amazing factor. I mean, he's just gonna go. Uh, Viper is obviously nice. They do not kill the Liberator, though, so that's some Viper energy. I'm gonna <gasps> say wasted. The Parasitic Bomb potential is huge. The Libs are gonna siege up very far forward. The Tank Siege as well. I mean, this is gonna be a messy fight. The Liberators are gonna get absolutely demolished. They do take out a lot of the Hydras, but the problem is with knocking down Hydras is that there's no Liberators left, so knocking down the Hydras doesn't have a knock on effect. That was a scary fight as Akron sets up on the left-hand side. Looks as though he's going to keep on pushing. Tanks are sieging. Liberators are moving. Well, a couple of abducts and those libs will likely actually not go down. The Hydras aren't here. Oh, I think Akron is still making this very scary, but the supplies are closer than they've ever been in terms of army. They really are. These Liberators are definitely a thorn in the side, but kind of squandered, a bit thrown away in the front there. And I mean, that fight before... He was really banking on that, just kind of cleaning up. But young Yakov yeah. was very quick to pounce. And now the Vipers wow. getting their damage done. The Rumbai's on the other side of the map as well, dealing, well, pokey damage, I suppose. Yeah, if he gets on the third base. <laughs> I mean, there's been SCVs on the third, I think you could jump on, but... Uh, um... he's, he's having a little gander. He's having a walk around here. There we go. Okay, now he's on the base. There we I go. I think this is the nail in the coffin here. Nail in the coffin. Yeah, man, I was convinced Acheron had it when he killed this third base off. I actually honestly think he had enough to just stim into the Lurkers because they didn't have range. And so it sounds crazy, but I actually think in that moment, if you just send it, the Lurkers don't have range. You do a little bit of a pre-split. There wasn't any buffer for the Lurkers either, so you get on top of them quickly. I actually think you could have maybe broken through in that moment, and then young Yakov never gets the chance to add Vipers, have a good Lurk account ever again. But... uh that was how close and crazy a game it was, as uh, Acheron does not get to take it down. Young Yakov holds on. Scrappy game, fun game. Hey, that's what we kind of expected from these two, and we get it in game number one, so great stuff. That was a really fun game, and yeah, we I, I didn't really get to talk about their play styles. Like, both these guys are chaotic. Uh, very different reasons, obviously. They play different races, but Young Yakov so much about Ling Bane, like so much, always thinking about these counterattacks and making it difficult for you. And not all Zergs play like that, not all Zergs want to, but if it is in your repertoire that you can do it, it's something nice having your arsenal. You've seen, you know, the greats like Raynor pull it off time and time again. Um, but Young Yakov did it very nice that game, got himself in a little bit of trouble quite a few times, but overall managed to solidify and, and get things done and dusted. Acheron very much put himself into an all-in position there just by being on three base only, three CC, and then eight barracks, the three extra ones being naked. And unfortunately for him, young Yakov just just ground. Uh, did very, very well to do it as well. Side Delta coming up from map number two. Let's see if we get another scrappy game. I mean, that's very Acheron as well just to play that kind of like, I'm three base and I'm going to stay three base. I'm going to come and kill you. So, uh, it's easy to imagine him playing similarly. I'm actually going to start with him in the top left-hand side. The Red Terran player is indeed Acheron. And spawning in the bottom right-hand side, one map away from clinching a 2-1, it is Young Yakov. And by 2-1, I mean 2-1 in the group, obviously. Yeah. Which is a huge deal. It's a massive deal. Uh, I mean, can you... Oh, oh, oh. So when we talked about Akron maybe being mm. a feisty youngster, this is definitely a bit feisty, I would say. And you know what? You see this so much less these days. So much less. You do, but Akron is probably one of the terrors I feel like does this the most. I remember Akron was always a big fan of, like, Boraxing as well. Like, Proxy Forax, the SCVs come and he just sends it. Um, this is just straight up T-Rex, so... Some Proxy T-Rex pressure to get us going. And uh, young Yakov, did he just turn the Overlord? He did, but I don't think it's ever going to go close enough to see those barracks without turning even more heavily. That is very unfortunate for him. You can... See... Oh, oh, oh! Oh! Oh my god! I tell you what, what a game, young man. Yakov. You know, crazy Ivan, eat your heart out. This is young Yakov. <laughs> That's a nice spot, mate. That's a nice it's a spot. a huge scout. I mean, maybe a bit too late to pull drones to harass it or be annoying or so, but just the mental preparation you can make, knowing that this is now happening, knowing that this is online. I mean, that in, that in itself is a big deal. So Overlord does want to run because it doesn't want to get taken down by those Marines. So obviously just run to some high ground here. The SCVs are going to show up. Even a third SCV from across the map going to show up as the double bunker, the triple bunker. 
gonna go down yeah. okay oh mate the i think he's doing this because i'm in the game he like this is a blast from the past this uh i used to give idra nightmares about this one man but akron there's, there's one thing behind this he also has a gas mining very very early like i think <laughs> this is not what you want to do against this, man. No, I, that's just going too soon. you got a spine on the way. I know it's going to be frustrating. You're never going to be able to get us around, but I feel like pulling the drones into it is, is almost never going to work. I think you've got to be a lot more patient against it, which is frustrating because like you don't want to be patient. You're concerned, but I think patience is absolutely huge right now. Absolutely huge. Like, if you are to pull drones against this, you have to be at the top of your ramp before the bunkers go down. Not like that. That was... Uh... Well, he knows it now, and maybe he's going to pay a pretty damn harsh price for it. But, oh, this is this is definitely a brutal one. Like, if he kept those drones mining, that's so much lost mining time. It really is. Now he's probably going to be able to break out, especially with those spines. And those bunkers, the focus in the hatch. That's why these lings aren't going down anytime soon. And that's what he came for. He's got his factory almost done back at home as well. Yes, he is going to lose pretty much everything here. All these bunkers will fall. None of them salvage. The Lings again surrounds on some of these Marines as well. Some of the Marines left behind going to just die to a spine crawler or so also. Okay. Okay, okay. Now what's going to happen, eh? That's, <laughs> that's the big question. I mean, I look at that in mineral income. It's been like 300 versus 1,000 for a little bit of time. Young Yakov's getting Ling speed on the go, but... Did those all three SCVs get home? They are. I tell you what, young Yakov's in trouble. A lot of trouble. Yeah, no, this is definitely not a pretty situation in any way, shape, or form. So I think you've got to kind of rebuild your hatchery, go from there. Like you say, the factory's done, so the first Hellion's already coming out as well. And mm. so we just got ourselves a setup so the Lings can't do much on the other side. We're all going to get Ling speed, and the CC's not done yet from Akron either because... Three bunkers is expensive, and that's more than you usually build on a two racks. And so the the CC timing or the natural CC is just a little delayed compared to what it might have been otherwise. But of course, it came at the idea of you know being super effective by kind of walling off. So uh, you get mm. some benefits. Comes at cost. It certainly does. It certainly does. And right now, let's have. Okay, so I mean, it's going to be a lot of speedlings available, which is good. You know, I I actually really like this Viking choice out of Acheron, because already it's a game where you know you've wounded your opponent. If there was an Overlord or two to pick off on the map, everything hurts. Everything really hurts. And he's going to be following up with more Hellions and a Medivac as well. So he's not looking to slow down this game anytime soon. He, is abso he absolutely knows he has a lead. And he absolutely knows that young Yakov has to do something wild to get back into it, be it be really really greedy like with super duper droning or some kind of all-in but as long as you are okay against both those things which the viking kind of helps against and gets to spot things for you he's going to be cooking yep no that's uh very true i love that we're going aggressive with the stim already in the second you know just getting both those racks back get stim I feel like you get on the map, you get aggressive, you just keep the pressure up on a Zerg player who is obviously hurting from the early game. Just don't give them the chance to get back into this at all. There's uh, a couple of queens popping out. Young Yakov just trying to restabilize third base up. I mean, he doesn't really have anything right now. He's got 12 lings on the map, so he's got to be really careful with his positioning. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Certainly does. Alrighty. Now the dust has settled a little bit. I'm a bit surprised these Hellions aren't already across the map <laughs> with the Medivac. Like, that, that's something where time is of the essence. Like, you really need it to be dealing damage as fast as possible. The sooner you deal it, the better. He's getting up a wall. Still no third CC on the go. I mean, I, I say that, but it's a very irregular game. But up to three barracks already. Stim on the go as well. That Viking's still looking for overlords. I think it's got two so far for its trouble. And that Hellion totally totally not spotted yet yep this is actually huge just resetting the drone count a little further right now is massive because that's the one thing young yakov was starting to do right get away his drones oh, oh, oh sweet evo chamber and you're still gonna lose a bunch of drones here right but that could have been even worse so good evo chamber to help out at least that is something it definitely is and dropped again got them all out and i tell you what that is 
That's a welcome sign if I've ever seen one for these Hellions just to... Okay, this is that moment in the Matrix. Neo sees the cat twice and he's like, deja vu. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. I mean, Akron's all over this game and young Yakov, he is struggling to get a look in here. Yep. <clears throat> I mean, he is... Uh... I mean, you know, Yakov is just kind of dead, right? Like, I kind of had some hope when he was getting the drone count up, but you just can't lose even more drones, right? You just can't lose even more. And the army of your Akron now coming across the map, because he knows how aggressive he can be. I mean, he's just going to send it across this bottom right. Away we go. And uh, I think we get the feeling that this is probably going to be a pretty powerful uh, push in from Akron. That's going to tie this series up, then. Yeah, I, I don't know how young Yakov can hold this. Like... As we stated before, he, he had to do something ridiculously greedy uh, or risky to get back into it. And Acheron, just a good, solid two-base all-in follow-up after killing so many drones. Just 17, but but still, like, the tech's there for him. And, yeah, yeah young Yakov has so such a far distance to go in this game. Yeah, I mean, he's he's dead, man. Because the thing is, it's not like Akron's like, oh, yeah, I want to turn back home and Mac or anything. No, he wants to kill him because, okay, he's got a third CC on the way up, but he knows the opportunity he's got right now. So, yeah. Just going to be seeing that uh, group of extra Banes coming in. Young Akron will do anything he can to survive, but I guess we'll see. No, absolutely. And what's, what's going back home here? Is that a couple of tanks? All right, so maybe thinking, maybe a bit worried about some counterattack play. I mean, after seeing the first game, you can absolutely respect that, right? Like, <laughs> um, a little bit of that, but just going to drop in to the main here. Not actually going to chase down the drones just yet. Now he's going to do a little bit. Baneling Train does come in, gets a few snipes on the go. Young Yakov is going to hang in here, just because it is a very important game. And, and, you know, why not? Why not? I think as the games go longer, he probably feels like... He's maybe the better player. And the fact that he's still not seen a third go down, he's got to know that Akron's eco situation is miserable. And he's, he's right about that. I think at the end of the day, right, if he saw a third base fully saturated already, he probably would be out of here a lot sooner. But if there's no third in location, y you can still be in this, right? Like, your own third base is up, your fourth is building... Like the third is very delayed from Akron, which is kind of why I thought he might be a bit more kind of like stick around and keep on pushing because he did delay the third a long time to make this push happen. But you know, he seems to be happy with what he's done and back it off. I'm not saying that young Yakov is going to be right back in this, but it definitely gives that possibility. Uh, kind of like a little bit of life at least. The Liberator is great though, and the entire mineral line not mining is going to be pretty darn harsh. As Ling Bane sets up on the left side, young Yakov setting up counterattacks, try and find something here in the near future. Yeah, and Akron's taking his third base very carefully here. Like, after being all about the tempo, he's like, you know what? The way I lost the first game was a little bit sad for me. Um, just going to make sure that I don't take too much damage from this stuff. And, yeah, the... the, the, the what's, what's the word? The, the What's the word for, like, the play? The, the script has been flipped. Absolutely yeah. has. Where he's the one just dealing all the damage. Because 21 drones to zero SVs falling. Such an opposite story than game one. Yep, damage, damage, damage. I mean, again, just one of these scenarios where we just have... I mean, basically nothing lost all game from Akron. What he's actually lost is kind of wild. He actually gets in here. A lot of the armies across the map. So this is a really well-timed counterattack. Oh. The SEVs were stacked because they were trying to defend against the Lings, but the Banes showed up. And honestly, that could not have done better, I don't think, for uh, for young Yakov. He'll clean out everything on the natural. I, I mean, yeah, this really couldn't have gone better for the amount of units he threw in. 20 SEVs and a bunch of Marines and a tank is amazing. The problem is young Yakov still has no answer to this army over here unless Akron really messes up the micro. Yeah, I mean, there's only there's 13 Banelings on the field, 52 Lings against 61 Marines. Like, upgrades are fairly close, but young Yakov just doesn't have enough to throw at this, man. He really doesn't. 50 drones versus 52 SCVs now. Or 42 SCVs, even. Yeah. Just loses. I mean, again, you just can't deal with the larger army. The counterattack was great. I mean, dropping in the main base is a problem that he has to try and deal with as well. Has to run everything over here. He's got one more counterattack moving this time. I mean, third base, I think, is actually undefended currently for Akron. As 
can just, just lift back up into these medevacs. The lings are just there. Okay, there's a liberate on it, but honestly, you still go in and get some SCVs here. And once again, Akron's defense is kind of crumbling, man. I mean, there's a bunch more workers going down. My goodness. Oh, my God. He's down to 27 SCVs again, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> this is... This is scrappy, man. Like, Akron's making his life so difficult, isn't he? Like, so difficult. Oh, he just doesn't need to be like this. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, he it like really a, bon does not. a bunker would have been great. I, I feel like as well, oh, he's like. Oh, oh, I don't think this is it. Yeah, I understand wanting to break this position. There's a bunch of units in the main base, but the tanks are so well choked up. Okay, well, that, that'll do it. That'll do it. GG. Surely. Will it, though? Will it? Will it? This is a messy I game, mean, honestly. Like, this is kind of messy on both sides. I think Akron is really intent on being on this bottom side when really, when he's killed this base, he should have just backed off, reinforced, and then hit the right side instead and just keep playing it like that. Because by staying down here, you're not immediately pressuring the Zerg, and that allows them to do things like counterattack and perhaps catch portions of your army, etc., right? So it's definitely a, a big deal. He's been so unwilling to just play the game out stably, hasn't he? Like, even now, 30 SCVs, he's like, you know what? Let's not make any more, you know? Yeah, and, I know. I mean, I think he is going to win, but... Well, yeah, he, he's got so much army supply, he should absolutely win every time, but... Again, like, some of these kind of... Like, even if he just pulled the SCVs off that third base, right? He would have saved a whole bunch more. So he's making this a whole lot messier than it ever needed to be. Uh, Akron really just benefiting from damage dealt early in the game as... Again, we have young Yakov fighting with every possible thing he can find right now. He really is, and feeling confident. Like, I mean, uh, he, he can A-move across the map at this point. He's got enough, hasn't he? He absolutely does. Uh, he's in the main base. Young Yakov still trying to fight, still doing rumbys as well. But I think he's greeted by a little bit of an army here. Will still kill a, maybe a <laughs> handful of SUVs, but lost his main. Young Yakov's a warrior, dude. Two bases. Oh, 100 supply down. Still fighting. A difficult game to cast because in my head it's, been, it's ended about five times. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Bly, eat your heart out. You know, I know that woman fancy. is up for Bly. Young Yakko's like, yeah. Bly, <laughs> you think this is a bad GG timing? Wait till Bly shows up. Yeah, oh, this is... Uh... This is fab, man. This is fab. Akron's probably like, why won't you die? How much do you have? And then Young Akron's like, I don't have anything. <laughs> why I don't you kill me? The whole game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, kill me already, oh. bro. Like, you know, I'm waiting for you to make the move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly. And that all started off with a triple bunker bay or yeah. triple bunker block at the natural. I, I was going to say, man, like, in my eyes, I look at this and I'm like, you know what? We really should have just, like, Done is as Akron is just kill him sooner because I feel like this gave young Yakov confidence. He's like, Man, I was so dead and I had him sweat, you know. Like, the fact that he, he lost so many SCVs, the fact that I survived so long, I take that as a bit of a confidence boost for young Yakov. So, we'll see. It's all signing for game three, potential for a long game, of course, big map. But uh, Akron definitely has been playing the very aggressive side of things. So, I guess we will see how this goes in a couple moments we just get everyone into our lobby and i'll sign you will round us out on the penultimate series of the day here akron and young yakov now tied one to one akron just needs a moment though so we'll have a couple moments extra before we go going into this series it was one that i was kind of unsure about like akron's obviously very very aggro uh very in the face and i think he's making the right call by doing that because it does feel like once young yakov gets online then he seems pretty content, pretty solid about it. But Akron's been very good about destabilizing that. Uh, just as good as Young Yakov's been good about destabilizing Akron's mid to late game, just because he's just not allowed it to happen, whether he wanted to get there anyway, but he's not allowed it to happen with the way he's been playing. No, no, that's uh, that's very true. It's been, uh, it's honestly been a very good series. It's just, I mean, a bit scrappy. This last game, you know, maybe went on a bit longer, but uh, yeah, the first uh, the first game was very fun, and obviously, again, just Young Yakov feeling like you had a chance at moments and kind of doing some things made it very fun as well. So, playing for players to be ready is Akron, who is still missing. He's dead one second, and he's been like twenty. Unbelievable, Terran players. Um, 
un ah, don't don't bring my Terran bros into it. This is uh, <laughs> I I think he just didn't understand what one sec meant. Maybe he thought, ah, yeah. oh, that's that's two minutes, right? No, no, no. Yeah, one sec, man. I mean, every second that passes right now, he's making it look worse for us. Oh, okay, he's here. Never mind. He's here. He's we'll here. stop complaining. Calm, calm down, Wardy. All right, okay, calm I'm down. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Getting ahead hey, of Wardy. myself. Wardy, how do you feel about tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yeah, you got that? another full day with me. I know. I know. I saw this. I was like, man, two days in a row of Ben. It's like great. What did you? When you when you first saw that, were you like, crap? <laughs> No, absolutely not. I love casting with you, Ben. Very oh, easy. Wardy. Oh, Very you, 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 know you Geordie flirt, you, Ugh. you Geordie flirt. If people, you know, if people, have you ever had anybody listen to you and be like, are you from Sunderland? Yes, all the time. It's insane. And really? It, yes, no, it's absolutely incredible. Like, because they're not even, I've had multiple people actually pinpoint which town I'm from. Not even like city, like which town I'm from, like where I was born. I was like, how? And they're like, I can hear it in your voice. I'm like, my voice, my accent is so, like, mild. Like, how? It's crazy to me. Wait, and they, they get it right? Yeah. Yeah, like, these guys are like, Wait. oh, I know exactly where you're from. They DM me, and they'll, I'm like, oh, my God, this is scary. Wait, are you from Sunderland? No, like, that's the thing. Like, if they just said Sunderland, I'd be like, fair enough. You guess, like, a big city near where I'm from, right? But they, they like, I'm in a, from a town, like, near there. Like kind of between Sunderland oh. and Newcastle, and they can tell which town. Ah, uh -huh. ah! I mean, I was just joking. I thought like no, maybe I'm gonna. No, people okay, genuinely okay, I... guess this. It's insane. I, I didn't know how those folk get along up there, you know? Because oh, yeah. somebody said, "Are you from Derby?" I could tell by your... I'd be like, "No, I'm not from bloody Derby." So I don't know how <laughs> you guys had it up north. Well, I, I think, yeah, if you if you tell a Geordie that they're from Sunderland, then they probably respond like that, like, oh, I'm not from Sunderland, I'm not, a, you know, I, I think they yeah. probably respond like that, but, yeah. I'm so bad with accents, like, Me I, too. there was a, <laughs> yeah, there was, like, I, I heard a Geordie guy talking, and I was like, oh, where, where, where are you from, or uh, where in Liverpool are you from? And they were like, <laughs> what? And I was like, god damn it. <laughs> Like, I'm so I'm so bad. That is pretty bad. Uh, I love that you. I love that you know you're bad, but then you still just go in and believe you know. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you know. Sometimes it's a good icebreaker. You know, you just yeah. kind of say something, and you're like, I'm probably going to be wrong. <laughs> but then we then we can talk about it. I mean, good strategy. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, sometimes I'll never forget asking kevin who the green guy in street fighter is man and he, and he just he was he was so confident he was so confident that it's the hulk i'll never forget that man i've i've never heard such lunacy oh he actually, oh, he actually got the extract managed to, yeah i thought he's blocking that with the scv bloody hell oh, yeah, that was an all-time clip <laughs> the green guy from street fighter Mate, the sad thing is I can't find that clip anymore, and I've tried oh, so. I know we tried. We tried to find it at Katowice, right? Yeah, we, we tried it's to impossible. Find it it's like um, it's definitely in the ESL like media thing on Twitter, but it's like they have so much. Like yeah. scrolling through is just impossible, you know. But if anybody out there can find this clip of Kevin, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin saying. The green guy in Street Fighter is the Hulk. Like, I will actually, yeah, pay you. Five dollars. <laughs> five quid. Yeah, five. Five. <laughs> five. <laughs> Good deal. Because, yeah, that is, you know, that is tear-inducing. Like, I, I, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, this DVZ has been pretty darn normal. We obviously saw the little bit of harass with the Reaper and SUV trying to block the hatchery and so on. But other than that... It really is standard triple CC as well. So Acheron is playing the macro setup. Hellion's coming out. Tech Lab coming up on the barracks now. Looks like the Starport's going to swap to that Tech Lab for Banshee time. Uh, or Raven time. So, uh, yeah. Just, just everything setting up normally. Nothing really funky on the Zerg side of things either. Really is uh, good old standard for the moment. And this is the most macro centric opening that Acheron's gone for. Yes. Like, 3, three CC into, like, Banshee, Hellion. This is. Great to see that barracks in a very unusual place if you do want to play bio. 
Because mm -hmm. no, you're onto it. Second starport. Second starport. Yeah. I know my Terrans, Wardy. I know. I, I the moment you said it as well, I was like, oh, actually, I think Akron loves a bit of second starport action sometimes, and that's exactly where you build it. You've killed the Overlord. You're going to build it right in the back of the base, make it as difficult to scout as possible. I love it, man. I, I love it. You said it's the most macro opening he's done, and Young Yanko's probably thinking, oh, cool, finally I get to play the game, and then he's going to get hit by double starport action. I love it. I call this one the pig killer. The pig killer. <laughs> Why? Yeah, you know, you know oh, after, after not playing for a year, Kevin's like, you know what, you're playing Basilisk <laughs> Big Brain Bouts, and I'm like, yeah, sure, man, give me someone easy, and they're like, how about pig? And then everybody was like, pig's gonna own you. And then I dished out the pig killer. Double starport banshee. Get out of my game. Pig killer. But this is three starport. <laughs> this is the pig, right, this pig the... killer. Hey, oh, God, I can't even say that. Pig killer squared. Yeah, it's... this is pig killer V2. Like, yeah. this is this is crazy. All right. Wait, what, what? Oh, okay, okay. There we go. I was this like, why is that starport lifting up? Mass, mass I like banshee. it. You like it? Uh, yeah, I've been casting the whole day, Wardy. This is great. <laughs> Everything's great when you've been casting the whole day. What could possibly go wrong? Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, seeing something where it's just like, what the hell is this? You know, um, this reminds me. Who was it in freaking Gamers 8 back then? Maru Solar, the, the three <laughs> starport. Uh, BC build on two base uh -huh. on like three gas. Oh, that was dreadful. But this this genuinely could work. Yeah, this could be uh, this could be decent as uh, especially if it comes in as a surprise, right? And you're just like kaboom, all the banshees, and then it's very difficult to ever clean them up. I mean, if you have enough banshees, they can shoot through queen spores, whatever they fancy. So we'll see what Akron does. A couple of them are going to show up on the bottom side now and hit that hatchery. But of course, seeing two banshees right now isn't weird. It's when all the extra banshees start showing up that you know you're in for a good time. Absolutely, and young Yakov, he is just... Anything that he sees, he's going to fight it. Like, anything that he sees. He's like, Hellion's on the map, off creep, let's go. And he's actually getting a good trade out of this as well, to be fair to him. Will he keep... Oh. He's going to keep that alive, isn't he? Yeah. i tell you what, though. Using a lot of transfusions to keep that alive means uh, that these banshees can come in later for the queens. Yeah, guys, exactly thinking that, right? Like... Transfusion on the hatch is all nice and cute, but when you're not able to save the queens, you're going to be regretting that in a big way. So, yeah, but good. And how's he meant to know? Right now, that is absolutely the correct play. And we get ready to join these banshees up together, and they are going to pack a punch. And they're about to have hyperflight rows so they can all join up more quickly and all push more quickly as well. And you know what? Young Yakov is a Ling Bane boy, and there's no Hydralis Den. There's, how, there's seven queens on the field, and there's soon going to be ten banshees on the field. Like, this is kind of an unfair fight, and he's not done any super overseer scouting or anything like that. So he actually is so damn unaware. Like, he, he, he probably thinks he's against just regular mech right now, which he will be, but... Uh, you know, I, I just want some cool music right now, like, dun 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 <laughs> where are all those queens? Yeah, well, he, I actually, he absolutely wants to find the Queens, right? As we are going to see Ling Bane surround the Hellions. The Banshees are going to stand and fight Ling Bane. There's the Queens. That's what he's looking for, and he is going to start shooting them down. He is able to more or less just shy of the one shot. So, going to lose one Banshee. The Spore's not ready here, by the way, that one on the upper right. So, we're going to get rid of one of the Spores, go straight after the second afterwards, and this Hatchery will then die. So, this will fall in the end, and all the drones are going to start falling with it. Link counterattack, main uh -oh. counterattack. There's not a lot to defend back at home, I guess, is the problem. Cyclones aren't ready yet, Ben. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh this, is, this is what I wanted, Wardy. This is what I wanted. I think Akron is absolutely going to come out ahead, but, but at what cost? At what cost, indeed? Because him not repairing that wall, him letting this happen, like, definitely brutal from him. He's actually massing Cyclones behind this. Maybe he's yeah. super scared about. Mutas at this point? I, I, well, he's right I don't to be. know. Yeah, he's super right to be. Has he even scouted that spy yet? I mean, this is wild. Yeah, the hive actually cancelled from Young Yakov when he realized what this was. So I don't think he actually had any clue at all. He was just going Ling Bane, 2 2 Bane's, you know, hive as well. He was absolutely just looking to play into like ultras or so. Realizing what this is, he cancelled everything. He cancelled 2 2, he cancelled uh -oh, the hive. Uh -oh. oh, yeah, the spy is going to be fired upon. Oh, if you lose the spy, that's everything he's banking his money up for. This is going to be extremely close to finish it. It's going to finish up. He gets the 13 <laughs> muters on the way. Starts a hydrogen as the follow up. The muters are big because they're a way to chase these banshees down. And that's exactly what you need right now. 
Yeah, I mean, Cyclones aren't exactly great against Mutas either. Look at that fancy upgrade. Hurricane engines coming online here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get that uh, Cyclone uh, play sped up as these Banshees actually are just not being killed, so they're having a very good time. Uh, the problem is the Spore goes one way, the Banshees can go the other, and they will finish off the last. So the main base has fallen just before the Mutas come in to save the day. And, uh, okay, there's still a lot of Banshees. We really need these Cyclones to clean up these Mutas. We really do. Like, I'm... A tiny bit worried because the new cyclones like they have more health but their damage is like significantly worse this is uh this isn't as straightforward as you'd think but he he's a bit worried i mean there are six cyclones popping out at a time to be fair get an engineering bay online banshees as well on the aggressive ah oh, this is starcraft mate this is starcraft Yes, it is. I mean, just going to go after this hatchet pulls the muters back to give you even more setup time as well more miss out turrets start to build Akron maintaining the supply lead at the moment as this continues through. Akron is not about making SVs though. He's up to 53 and he's like, you know what? Let's go. Let's roll. And again, he's, he's, it's not as if he hasn't got money to use or he wouldn't benefit from more SVs. He's just, he's not about that life, Wardy. He's a make your life more difficult, Taren. <laughs> yeah, he does anything that's more difficult to actually handle is, uh, we're going to lose one Banshee there, but you know what, that's another hatch that's dead before the uh, Mutas show up, so, and we are just killing bases right now, we get the base, we try and run, the Mutas are looking to intercept, they went the right way, the Mutas get the grab, one Banshee, two Banshee, going down immediately, we've got three guaranteed, four I think, and now we have to split the Banshees away, so many end up dropping, wow, full clean up here from Young Yakov, and that is huge just to remove this pressure from the map. I think this is um, a common case of thrower on right now because, <laughs> I mean, dude, look how many Cyclones he's got. I've actually, I haven't seen this number of Cyclones in the new patch yet when it comes to like going up against Zerg. So I'm genuinely curious how this is going to go because he has just more than allowed young Yakov back into this game with all this play that he's done. And you know what? I actually think, I think young, I think young Yakov's in a good spot now. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feeling it for him. What if these cyclones just go across the map? You think he can survive? You think he's okay? Well, you know, he, he might be okay. I mean, that's there's a so long link in this. Yeah. And there's, I mean, that remember they're not as good at switching targets now. And remember, they don't have upgrades at all. These Damn. cyclones. They suck. <laughs> they suck, man. They do really suck. And the muters aren't oh, even no. in this fight. Ba Banelings. Looking for connections, hit <laughs> so many Cyclones. Yeah, more Cyclones show up, but honestly, the, the first group of Cyclones I thought were going to do okay, but yeah, just not able to do as much nowadays. The Mutas come back in towards the natural. Young Yakov is getting control of this game as Zerg is taking the handle, and he's steering it in the right direction, so... Off and away we go as a couple of SCVs continue to mind about the Banshee Cyclones continue to the bottom. Again, Hydra's Lingling Bane's all coming up. And we'll just see Cyclones locking on again, and that Spore Crawler in trouble. I wonder what that fusion core was for. Like, it's kind of halfway in production now, like he hasn't got an SV on it, but mm -hmm. I wonder what it was for. Yeah, well, we might never find out, is I don't know if we're actually going to ever see Young Yakov survive through this, Ben, because that's a lot of Cyclones. I thought they sucked on the other it's side, a lot but of the, cyclones. the sheer number is insane, right? He's up 30 army supply, so there's chances of not oh. if you lose a few of them like that, though. That's not pretty. Okay. you got to have faith in how bad they are, Wally. Have faith, have faith. Have faith They're super bad. bad. Yeah, so bad, man. Look at this. <laughs> I don't have They're faith, They're Overlord. And now the links come. Let's go, yeah. let's go. Well, the supplies are getting closer. Young Yakov is just streaming units. And I think the problem is Akron just can't reinforce this either, right? So that becomes a constant problem. And the less Cyclones there are, the better the link surrounds are on them. So that obviously Mate, is a big deal too. This game's so close. I, I think Akron's actually going to do it, you know? No, I, I, don't think, I don't think he's got enough reinforcements anymore. You don't Surely think Akron's going to do it? I don't know. I, I, I had to, <laughs> like I, I kind of started to feel as though he couldn't reinforce enough, but it gets knocked down to two bases only for Young Yakov. He doesn't have a main. Maybe he does it. Or maybe I actually Young Yakov. Uh, maybe I, I, I actually don't know. I'm genuinely confused. I think Akron wins this for sure. Now look at the supplies. Yeah. I mean, that is a big, big, big deal. And yeah. I mean, yeah, no, you're right. I kind of, I just sort wasn't... of felt like he was going to start cleaning up the Cyclones, but then we go back home, there's so many more Cyclones again. Yeah. Madness. Yeah, it's been scrappy. Like, 
both these guys have been so committed to the aggression that the defensive part just not quite being all, you know, joined up nicely, but made for one hell of a scrappy series. Yeah, great series. I mean, being super fun, scrappy, these two were very well matched for each other. That's the beauty again, some of these 1-1 one -one matchups, right? Like, you know, the players are just very much so meant to be playing against one another at a competitive level, and then these styles just match up great. Sometimes, you know, at the, the lower end of the pro scene, you have the, the pros who play, and they play like, they both play like very honest macro, and they end up in very long games because they struggle to like close out. Whereas these guys end up in long games because they throw everything possible at one another, kill off half the other guy's stuff, can't quite end the game. You know, it's, it's such a grueling affair. It's been extremely fun to watch. I love this series. I think this might be my yeah, favorite series all day. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, they've, they've definitely... And I wonder if they played like a longer best of seven or something, whether it would all be as like ridiculous, this? you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it question. would be. Not a bad assumption, as our Banshee's going to try and take down another hatchery. The Hydra's trying to show up to be the response. Obviously, once the Mutas got dealt with, the Spire died earlier, so no more of those. I uh. tell you. And both of them have been very unwilling to quit either. Like, absolutely, if you get knocked down, doesn't matter. You've got, like, eight more lives left in the tank, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but I, I do think that blue flame is uh, you know, I absolutely going to be brutal. I was going to say this before when it was like getting to the point where it was like Ling Hydra. I was like, man, Hellions would be really good if you could just add some Hellions on. But then without blue flame, it's a bit questionable. And obviously, it was very much so in the go right there. Now it's uh, all a go again as you get uh, Acheron gathered up. And uh, he's going to have time to get blue flame. And then he's going to be even better off as we try to go lurk as his young Yakov. That is, I mean, <laughs> oh, this is great. Uh, like, okay, okay. So more SV is being made now because he technically is behind in drones right now. I mean, he does have orbitals, obviously, but it's just three. He, is he floating over his? No, no, he did make fourth as well. So that's nice to get the planetary going. Still a lot of banshees to worry about. Yeah. Banshees coming through. Extractor taking some damage. He's going to go down. The hide is still chilling on the upper left. And again, you got that uh, Banshee cloaking Oy. coming through and knocking down multiple Hydras. Well, that's nice until the Hydras fight back. I just clicked on one of these Banshees. I had 25 kills on it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. That's actually fairly wild. Yeah, that's crazy. But Akron isn't being aggressive with the ground arm. Like, he... Ha there's still 37 Cyclones on the map here, Wardy. I think he's kind of... I'm, I'm not sure. Do you think he should have stopped building Cyclones at some point? Oh, uh, 100%. But I'm, I'm, I guess the point I was going to be trying to make was... Uh, I think he should have tried to finish him with them. Yeah. I, I don't know why we stopped. To be honest, I feel like we had enough, clearly, to keep going. And now he's going to send it, but I feel like this is... Not necessarily the worst time, but I mean, the Lurker Den is available, right? So we get some Lurkers up, we play some Lurkers. I mean, might be a challenge, question mark. You, know, you don't really usually see 40 Cyclones running into Lurkers, so. Hmm. Like, does he have. Yeah, yeah. I swear he was making some tanks at some point, but those Lurkers are actually going to be problematic. Like, a minute ago, we were looking at 150 supply Acheron against 100 supply Young Yakov. It's now not even remotely as bad, and Acheron, again, in this game, uh, kind of forgot he could make SCVs. So he's at 44 SCVs with almost 200 supplies, so his army's massive. And, I mean, he is getting into a really good position here between the bases. Is there Lurkers down in that south one? No, so that base is kind of forfeit by young Yakov. Yeah, Cyclone's going to clean up over here. These Lurkers... Oh, hold, position, hold, position. hold position! Oh, my God! Oh, How he's waiting so be? How long! Good oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was actually disgusting, man. The army supplies actually get pretty close together off the back of that. Don't get me wrong, it's probably still fine for Akron, but <laughs> that was actually an opportunity. Holy goodness. Oh my god, he did... That... Yeah, that was amazing. Wow. That was, oh, that was a great... wild. <laughs> that's a great series, Wardy. It's a yeah. great series. Even even when the game is over, we have an amazing moment at the end. 
as Akron should surely just kill off now. There's only two lurkers left. He pushes on in. Young Yakov has nothing left to say, do, or anything else. GG's, and Akron is going to take